Today, I'm going to show you how to make smooth parallax scrolling in Scratch. Previously with our Scratch tutorials, we've covered how to make a character move around the screen. But what if we want our character to stay still in the middle and the background to scroll, like many common games today? Well, parallax scrolling is what you want, and fortunately, it's not that hard to do. The way we're going to do it is highly efficient because we're going to make the script once and then duplicate it several times with a couple of little variations and then we'll have a really dynamic background that creates a great sensation of movement and speed. So here we are in Scratch and the first thing I've done is import a sprite for a spaceship and I've given it a very very simple script. We've told it when the game starts forever check if the left arrow is pressed and if it is point to the left and then we have another script that matches that except when the right arrow is pressed, point to the right. If we test that, we can see that our ship changes direction and that's all it needs to do. The thing about scrolling games is the character doesn't normally move on the screen, it's the background that moves and creates the illusion of movement. So what we're aiming for with our parallax scrolling is to create something with a lot of depth. So we're gonna start by painting a new sprite and temporarily we're gonna paint bucket in black just so we can see what we're doing. And the first thing we're gonna do is come to the brush Set it to a medium size in white and we're going to draw a dot as close to the middle as we can. Now we're going to come to our set costume center and we're going to match that as accurately as possible and this will help with our scripts working later on. Now that that's done we can come back to the paint bucket, set it to clear and delete that black background. And it doesn't look like anything's here because it blends in but we can see that our sprite is retained. Let's start with a green flag and the first thing we're going to do is to tell it to hide and that seems a little bit strange but it's entirely necessary when we're dealing with clones and that is by far the most efficient way to do this. By doing it this way we don't need to have a sprite for every star but we can basically create a pattern and then Scratch will generate as many stars as we tell it to. So let's get out when I start as a clone and then start to set our parameters. First thing we want to do is to pick a random position. So we're gonna say, go to X, Y. We're gonna to come to operators and get out two randoms. And we're gonna populate those. So we go from minus 240 to plus 240. So therefore let's set it up as minus 235 to plus 235. That should give us a nice range. And I believe we go from positive 140 down to minus 140 for the Y. So once again, we'll leave a little bit of margin and let's hit the green flag a couple of times to test that. The reason we can't see it is because we hit it. So let's come and get a show and then test it again. Okay, excellent. We can see our star goes to a random place every time the game starts. And this will be important when we've got many stars on the screen. Therefore, that's why we need to hide it before it picks its place and shows. Otherwise, it'll all start in the same spot and all of a sudden spread out and that will look quite strange. Another thing we're going to do is to come down and set a graphic effect. And we're going to take this one that says set color effect, but we're going to change it to ghost effect. Ghost is basically the opacity. So zero being fully visible and then 100 being completely invisible. Once again, we're going to come to operators and go to pick a random. And for our first line of stars, we want them to be mostly visible. So let's set this from 10 to 40. So we'll have a little bit of variation. And once again, let's test it. All right, time to set up the scrolling. So if we come to control, we're gonna get out a forever because we want this to happen for the duration of the game. Then we're gonna get out a bunch of if thens. Our first one's a straightforward and all that's gonna do is set the direction of movement based on the keyboard. We're going to come to sensing and get the key space pressed, put it out twice. One of them is going to be set to right arrow, the other one is going to be set to left arrow. And then we'll come up to motion and get a move. Now because the stars are going to be going opposite direction to the ship, we need to set the right one to minus 10 steps and the left one can stay as positive 10 steps. Let's test this out. We can see that it's going the right direction. When it gets to the edge, nothing happens, however. And that's where these two scripts here come in. 
Let's come up to operators and get out the greater than and less than. One can go in each. Now we'll come back to motion and we'll get out the X position. Okay, we're gonna tell it that if our X position gets smaller than a certain number, that we want it to come back to this side. So let's do that now. So let's say if it gets smaller than minus 235, then we'll tell it to go to positive 235. So if it goes to minus 235, we'll set the X to positive 235. So essentially it goes straight to the other side of the screen. We'll test it out, should work great. We've got a pretty seamless transition there. Of course, we need to do the same thing here, except in reverse. So instead of negative 235, we're gonna have positive, and on this lower one, we're gonna have the negative. Random placement, and we can see that now it works in both directions, excellent. Now we get to the reason for doing this with a clone, and to make it work how we intend, we're gonna put a loop up here around create a clone of myself, and that's gonna generate a bunch of random stars from this script, but we're only gonna do it with one extra line of code. Let's come to control, and drag out our repeat and test it with 10. Okay, already we're having a much nicer scrolling effect. I think we can bump this up to 20 and see how that looks. Okay, we have a nice sensation of motion, but it's not really parallax scrolling because we need to have more layers. We need to go deeper. Once we've set up this first range of scripts, this is extremely easy to do. I'm gonna rename this one here to close stars, and then I'm simply gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna rename this one to medium stars. Now let's do some little changes. We still want it to pick a random X and Y, and we still want 20 at this stage, but the ghost effect, we want to be more faded because these ones are gonna be further into the background. So let's change the range on this one from 40 to 60. Now there's only one other change we need to do. Things that are further away will scroll past much more slowly. So we're gonna reduce this from minus 10 to minus five, and this one is gonna go down from 10 to five. Let's test our script. Okay, so we have some fainter ones, and now when we start to scroll, we can see we have a little bit of depth. Some fly past in the foreground, other ones are more subtle in the background. Let's repeat this one more time. So this time the ghosting will go from 60 to something like 90. And we'll make this number even smaller again. So minus two and two instead of minus five and five. Let's test this out. Now ones in the background are quite subtle little specs. And we can see that is working beautifully. Now I'm gonna argue that we perhaps have too many stars in the foreground. So I'm gonna come back to close stars and reduce that down to something like 12. Run it again. And that is looking quite natural there. So this is working great. You should be imaginative in how you apply this to your game. There's nothing that says it just needs to be a space scene. Imagine that your closest layer were lines on a road and they went past for a car game. You had signposts and houses and things like that for your medium layer. And then you had things like a mountain range on the horizon for your far layer will work exactly the same way. You should also note that it will work vertically as well. All you need to do is adjust your coordinates here and because it doesn't go to 240, it goes to 140. You're gonna make it 135 instead of 235, retaining the positive and negative values for each of these. So that's gonna wrap it up. And remember, you can apply this in a number of different situations and genres of games. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy coding. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.